This is Gustavo Frank. I will kill your infant daughter. He's one of the most iconic TV villains of all time. And this is Giancarlo Esposito. They cry. It's alright to cry. I mean, that's what you do when you feel sad. He's a Danish-American actor with an incredibly storied career spanning as far back as the 1970s. He's played hundreds of roles in many different mediums, but in particular, he plays a very good villain. And I want to talk about how he went from this... Friend RJ, we just torched King Hall. ...to this... We all go boom. And what makes him such an intimidating performer? Let's take a look. Giancarlo Giuseppe Alexandro Esposito was born in Copenhagen, Denmark to his parents Giovanni Esposito, an Italian stagehand and carpenter from Naples, Italy, and Elizabeth Foster, an African-American opera and nightclub singer from Alabama. Giancarlo was brought up in Denmark until the age of six when his family moved to Manhattan, New York. During this time, he appeared in a few plays on Broadway, including one at a young age of eight in the play Maggie Flynn. He attended Elizabeth Seton College, earning a degree in radio and television communications. From 1971 to 1977, he served as a young singer on the PBS children's show The Electric Company. But it wasn't until 1979 when Esposito's film career officially began, when he played a Puerto Rican teenager in the film Running. During the 80s, he appeared in films such as Taps, Maximum Overdrive, King of New York, and Trading Places. Before his career really started to take off when he began teaming up with Spike Lee on multiple occasions, first in School Days, then in Mo Better Blues, Malcolm X, and probably most famously in Do the Right Thing, where he played the character Buggin' Out. By my sneakers. Who told you to walk on my side of the block? Who told you to be in my neighborhood? I own this brownstone. Who told you to buy a brownstone on my block in my neighborhood on my side of the street? Over the next two decades, Esposito appeared in a wide range of projects from Miami Vice, Law and Order, Reckless, Waiting to Exhale, The Usual Suspects, and many more. Seriously, check this man's IMBD. It's long and varied. In 2009, he came in to audition for a role with one line that was supposed to be in one episode. And what he did with that one line brings us to by far his most famous role. As the story goes, Gus was supposed to be a guest spot that would only appear in one episode and the only direction that Esposito was given was to be a friendly manager of the chicken restaurant Los Pollos Hermanos. However, Esposito thought that if he played the line as if Gus had something to hide, he would get invited back to do more episodes. And thus, one of TV's greatest villains was born. Gus Fring is easily the best antagonist in Breaking Bad which is no small feat when one thinks of all the iconic villains in the show's five season run. Gus Fring only appeared in 26 of the total 62 episodes of the series, but he made quite an impression in that time. So much so that he later returned to the iconic role in the Breaking Bad prequel Better Call Saul. But what characteristics make Gustavo Fring and the way he's portrayed by Esposito such a memorable foil? I would say this can be boiled down to three characteristics. Gustavo Fring is not wasteful. Whether with people or resources, he doesn't let things go to waste without purpose. He makes carefully calculated decisions after weighing his potential options in order to pursue the course of action that will give him the best chance of being successful. Gus hides in plain sight while orchestrating a global drug empire, and therefore incurs risks at every step and every day, so he tries to mitigate them. 
He knows Walt is too volatile even though he makes the best product, so initially he doesn't agree to work with him, and when he does, he tries to find ways to keep him in check or replace him. He isn't some madman bent on global destruction, no. He's smart, and when push comes to shove, he will make the intelligent move to benefit himself. When you think of what makes a great villain, understanding is probably one of the last characteristics one would think of. One trait that is more commonly thought of is having a point, or when the villain's line of thinking is understandable. It's the, oh yeah, they kinda had a point there. This is Killmonger, Magneto, Ozymandias, and Roy Batty. These are villains that, as an audience, you can see where they were coming from. However, I want to take this line of thinking a little further for Gus. Not only does his actions make sense for him, he knows why others make the decisions they do. It's not just that the audience can see what drives Fring, but Fring himself can see what drives the people that oppose him. He knows that pride drives Hector Salamanca, so he exploits it. He knows that Walt's duty to his family is what pushed him to a life of crime. So at first he tries to connect with that, and then pushes to threaten that when he doesn't comply. Gus knows what makes everyone around him tick, so that he can position himself two steps ahead. Gus rarely loses his cool. Even when things don't turn out favorably for him, he usually keeps his emotions in check. He's unflinching in the face of certain danger and threats on his life. That being said, when he does lose control of his emotions, it makes it that much more scary. Esposito himself has said that this constantly calm, cool under pressure demeanor was the defining thing that he wanted to bring to the character, going as far as to do yoga before stepping on set to make sure that he could be as relaxed as possible when he delivered his lines. When asked about this unusual habit, Esposito told Entertainment Weekly, I thought I could harness the calm, and what yoga did is help me to be calm and leave space in between the question and the answer within a scene. For me, that breath of space left time for Gus to be. And it's this stoic composition that gets under the skin of the emotional Walt throughout the series and lends itself to us, the audience, seeing Gustavo as a character that is always composed and in control. These are impressively complex traits for any character to have, let alone a villain, but what makes the way that Giancarlo Esposito plays villains so distinctive is that he brings these traits in some form or another to almost every villain he portrays, and he plays a lot of villains. Gus Fring instantly became an iconic villain, earning Esposito multiple award nominations and producers in all sorts of shows, networks, and mediums quickly took notice. Just a quick rundown of some of the antagonists that Esposito has portrayed since his demise in Breaking Bad. Gilbert Lawson in Community He's shooting lightning and I'm naked! Lieutenant Tom Neville in Revolution. I will conscript all of your children and I will re-educate them until they no longer remember your names. The Dentist in Payday 2. We take pride in taking good care of our patients. Raj Ghoul in Son of Batman. You give us the world we wanted, you and I. Black Spider in Batman Assaults on Arkham. El Lazo in Westworld and that the animals never tried to pull them up again. Charlie Boulaire in Jet, Lex Luthor in Harley Quinn, Phantom Blot in DuckTales, Your magic and your menace end in witch! Not to mention a string of big and memorable performances in 2020 alone, featuring the return of Gus Fring in Better Call Saul, the newest season, Stan Edgar in The Boys. I don't have to consult you about Stormfront or anything else. Moff Gideon in The Mandalorian. 
I will act in my own self-interest, which at this time involves your cooperation and benefit. And he'll be playing Anton Costello, the villain of the upcoming Far Cry 6 video game. We all go. Boom. Now these roles vary in many different ways. Some are voiceover, while some are live action TV shows, while some are in video games, and still others are voiceover for live action TV shows playing a character inside a video game. All of these roles vary in size and importance, but Esposito brings some of these characteristics that make Gus so memorable to each of them in some way or another. I'm not going to say that this is always the case. I mean, if someone wants to make the case why Phantom Blot from DuckTales is a calm, calculating, layered villain, be my guest. But it should be noted that for as silly and over the top as that role is, there should be something said that this is the exception rather than the rule when considering how many different varied roles Esposito has. I also want to make sure that I make this clear. This isn't the case of someone who caught a break with one great character and is riding that success till people forget about it. Giancarlo Esposito has got to be one of the busiest people in television right now. I mean, in this past year alone, the man has been in Better Call Saul, two seasons of The Mandalorian, Harley Quinn, and The Boys with these tremendous performances netting him two separate Emmy nominations for two separate roles. And he isn't even finished yet. He's going to have a much bigger presence in Mandalorian Season 2 most likely, and has hinted that there will be many twists coming in Seasons 3 and 4. So I'm guessing there's going to be a good chance he'll stick around for a little while. Giancarlo Esposito will always be synonymous with Gustavo Fring, for better or for worse. And it's easy to see why. The way that Esposito portrayed Gus is the reason that he is iconic as he is. But it is important for people to realize that this is not all that Giancarlo should be known for. He has had many important and fantastic roles before Gus, and he has had great and memorable roles after playing him. I have absolutely no doubt that Giancarlo Esposito will continue to have amazing roles, villain or otherwise, throughout the rest of his acting career.